Legendary artist and songwriter Leonard Cohen may not be with us any longer, but he lived quite the eccentric life while he was Earthside. Despite his career as an entertainer, Cohen found himself on the brink of insanity following a tiring tour in 1994. You may not know this, but the Canadian singer then turned to Zen Buddhism as a result of feeling hopeless, becoming a monk for many years. Even aside from this period of life, Cohen lived as a nomad more often than not, with homes in various countries, each of which contributed to his his creative inspiration. From Leonard's birthplace in Westmount, Quebec, to his final resting place in Los Angeles, the artist's journey unfolded in multiple locations, each leaving a legacy, and today we're going to be taking a deeper look. Born in 1934 in Westmount, a suburb of Montreal, Leonard Cohen spent his early years in the culturally rich and multilingual environments of the province of Quebec, Canada. Raised in a middle-class Jewish family, he absorbed the influences of Montreal's diverse culture cultural landscape, an influence that would later find expression in his poetry and music. After completing his undergraduate studies at McGill University in Montreal, Cohen ventured away from home. In the 1960s, he lived on the Greek island of Hydra, seeking refuge and creative inspiration. The simplicity and solitude of Hydra provided him with the space to focus on his writing, resulting in the creation of some of his early and influential work. Cohen's journey continued to New York City, where he immersed himself in the vibrant folk music scene of the 60s, the creative energy of Greenwich Village, and the blossoming counterculture influenced his shift from poetry to music. New York became a pivotal point in Cohen's career, marking the beginning of his musical exploration. In the mid-1960s, his debut album Songs of Leonard Cohen featured timeless tracks such as Suzanne and So Long Marianne. His unique fusion of folk, rock and a touch of melancholic spirituality set him apart in the popular music scene. In the early 1970s, Cohen returned to his homeland, settling in the artistic community of Montreal. His connection to the city remained strong throughout his life, and he often spoke fondly of the creative atmosphere and impact the city had on his work. Hallelujah from his 1984 album Various Positions became one of his most iconic songs, covered by countless artists over the years. Overwhelmed by a sense of hopelessness after touring his album The Future, Leonard turned to numbing himself with four bottles of wine daily, attempting to clear the vigorous pain in his knees. He took a hiatus from the music industry in 1994 after a tour and he retreated to a Zen Buddhist monastery on California's Mount Balti. It's here that he sought spiritual solace. Spending five years under the guidance of the monastery's founder, Cohen aimed to address his mental health challenges. Despite the added structure to his life, Cohen found an unexpected companion in the founder Roshi during late night whiskey sessions. All of this led Cohen to decide to leave in 1999. Reflecting on his departure, Cohen expressed, I felt it wasn't doing any good. It wasn't really addressing this problem. Distress, which is the background for all my activities, feelings, and thoughts. It was a lot of work for very little return. While Cohen may not have felt that his time in the monastery Monastery improved his life, it strengthened his connection with his Jewish faith and led him to the realization that material luxuries were not essential for survival. Not to mention his experiences during this period influenced his later work, particularly the album's 10 new songs in 2001 and Dear Heather in 2004. Let's rewind back to Leonard Cohen's home in Quebec, Canada. He grew up on Belmont Avenue in the affluent Westmount neighborhood of Montreal, where he used to play in Murray Hill Park behind the family home. In 2006, Leonard told an interviewer, I feel at home when I'm in Montreal in a way that I don't feel anywhere else. I don't know what it is, but the feeling gets stronger as I get older. Cohen began his poetic journey at McGill University nearby, where he held the positions of president in both the McGill Debating Union and the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity. Under the guidance of esteemed poetry professors Louis Dudek and Irving Layton, Leonard garnered the Chester McNaughton Literary Prize in 1950. Another place in Montreal that has ties to Cohen is the Sommer Building at 423 Mayer Street, which housed his grandfather's clothing factory and where Leonard worked during the 1950s, fostering his love for suits. 
Situated in the Plateau Montréal district, Cohen's one-time triplex home at 28 Rue de Valliers, just off Saint Laurent Boulevard, earned its name as La Main by Montrealers. Another place that Cohen was a familiar presence at was Parc du Portugal, which was directly across from this residence. On September 27, 1960, six days after his 26th birthday, Leonard Cohen bought a house in Hydra, Greece for $1,500 using inheritance from his recently deceased grandmother. This was a decision that would change his life forever. This was a big deal in the words of one of Cohen's friends, a commitment to a place and world that was mysterious and unusual. Buying the house was a complicated act, needing the help of his friend Dimitri as translator, advisor, and witness to the deed. Cohen later said was the smartest decision he ever made. The three-story ancient whitewashed building with its five rooms on multiple levels was run down and had no electricity, plumbing, or running water at the time. However, it was a private place where Cohen could work, either on the large terrace or in his music room on the third floor. In the 1960s, Hydra was a bohemian sanctuary, drawing in artists, writers, and musicians from all over the globe. It became a haven where creativity flourished with its relaxed lifestyle and breathtaking natural surroundings. The absence of cars on the island was also a plus, as cobblestone streets were navigated by donkeys. This was the primary mode of transportation here. Hydra's fusion of traditional Greek architecture and rugged landscapes attracted individuals seeking solace from the chaotic outside world, just like artists like Cohen. In Hydra, Leonard Cohen not only found an appreciation for the island, but also discovered love with Marion Elin, a Norwegian woman who captured his heart. Their romantic tale became legendary, immortalized in Cohen's music and poetry. Marianne became his muse, inspiring timeless songs like So Long Marianne and Bird on the Wire. For seven blissful years, Leonard and Marianne shared the Hydra house, where creativity flowed as effortlessly as the island's crystal waters. During this time, Cohen authored some of his most profound and iconic works, including his debut novel Beautiful Losers, and the album Songs of Leonard Cohen. Cohen once described his Greek home to his mother. It has a huge terrace with a view of dramatic mountain and shining white houses. The rooms are large and cool with deep windows set in thick walls. I suppose it's about 200 years old and many generations of seamen must have lived here. I will do a little work on it every year and in a few years it will be a mansion. I live on a hill and life has been going on here exactly the same for hundreds of years. All through the day you hear the calls of the street vendors and they're really rather musical. I get up around 7 generally and work till about noon. Early morning is coolest and therefore best, but I love the heat anyhow, especially when the agency is 10 minutes from my door. Leonard's house here provided him with a stable foundation, easing the urban rush as he said to a friend, stating that having this residence made cities less intimidating. It served as a reassuring retreat, allowing him to spend plenty of time in the city too, but keeping a connection connection to his sanctuary. In Hydra, he could live in virtually complete seclusion at a fraction of the cost it would take in Northern Europe or Canada, where the people were unconcerned as to who you were or what you did. Leonard discovered the Greek way of life, alternating rhythms of work and leisure, both on the seasonal and daily basis, which were so healthy for creative thought. Adam Cohen, Leonard Cohen's son, carries on his father's legacy, not only through music and poetry, but also in his connection to Hydra. Now owned by Adam, the home remains a cherished family retreat. Like his father, Adam returns here, especially during the summer months, to find inspiration and reconnect with the island's soul. Following in Leonard's footsteps, Adam is a gifted musician and songwriter. In 2014, Adam returned to Greece to record his album, We Go Home. In a behind the scenes video, he paid homage to his father, showing the traditional house in Hydra and offering glimpses of its timeless attraction. The street outside the house now bears the name Leonard Cohen, a fitting tribute to the man who left quite the mark on the island. Of course, like most celebrities, Leonard also had property in California. The home where Leonard once lived in Los Angeles was a modest two-story apartment away from the Hollywood Hills mansions, believe it or not. Cohen's farmer street is tree-lined and quiet, and neighbors can be seen working on their gardens or her 
were dragging their recycling bins onto driveways after pickup. On the lawn outside his former house sits two green wood slat chairs and an old wooden picnic table. While not much is known about Cohen's home here, this is where he would end up passing away. In his later years, Cohen divided his time between Los Angeles and Montreal and his home in the quiet neighborhood of Wilshire Boulevard in LA became a significant chapter in his life. This is where he continued to produce profound and introspective works until passing away in 2016. Cohen's later years were marked by a resurgence in popularity with albums like Old Ideas in 2012 and You Want It Darker in 2016 receiving critical acclaim. You Want It Darker was released just weeks before his passing on November 7, 2016 at the age of 82. Leonard Cohen's legacy extends beyond his music and he remained a prolific poet and novelist throughout his life. His influence on contemporary music and his ability to articulate the complexities of the human experience have left a big mark on art and culture. His induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2008 and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2010 just prove Cohen's place as a respected figure in music and literature. For today, that'll wrap up our look into the homes and life of the late Leonard Cohen. Before we go, answer this question for me. Would you ever retreat to a monastery and become a monk in hopes of finding peace and solitude? Let me know in the comments below if you'd ever do something so extreme. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. I'm Care the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all next time. Bye.